Hey lifers, Dustin here. It's Tuesday, which means it's time for another installment of College Football Top 10s. And in today's episode, I want to take a look at 10 college football records that I don't think will ever be broken. There are plenty of stats and streaks that seem like they will absolutely never be broken. And then you have a coach or a player or a team or a dynasty that comes along and shatters those records and propels that stat even further along than you thought it could ever go. And that's certainly the case in this video. There's a chance that by the end of the 2017 season, some of these records will drop. But in my humble opinion, I don't think they will. And I try to explain why in each one. If there's any records that I miss as you're going through this that you notice, please let me know down in the comment section. And let me know which one of these you think is the most unbelievable. And here we go, starting with number 10. Number 10, the SEC's seven straight national championships. For almost a decade, the SEC seemed untouchable. Coming off the tail end of USC's dominant beginning of the 21st century with their dynasty, the SEC used a couple of different teams to rotate the highest crown in the college football land. The streak started in 2006 with the Florida Gators defeating the Ohio State University 41-14 in the BCS National Championship game. And for the next seven years, the elite teams of the SEC just seemed to dominate every other team from every other conference. During the next seven years, the defenses from the Southeastern Conference just seemed faster and bigger and stronger and nastier than the defenses from other parts of the country. The rivalries, the head coaches, the memorable moments during the SEC during this period, everything just seemed more magnified somehow. This showed in the conferences that the SEC beat in those national championship games, including members from the Big Ten, the Big 12, the Pac-10, and independent Notre Dame. In fact, in the 2013 season, Auburn was just 13 seconds shy of adding Florida State and the ACC to that list as well. Hell, the SEC even beat the SEC during this time period. That is the biggest spot of controversy during this seven-year stretch for the SEC is the idea that there was an SEC bias on ESPN's behalf to try to sway voters and any kind of polling indicators to get an Alabama-LSU rematch in the national championship game, Alabama having already lost to LSU 9-6 in overtime at home when Oklahoma State, in a lot of people's eyes, should have had a shot at the Tigers to end the season. While the SEC is not nearly as dominant as it once was, the cream of the crop still is. In fact, since 2006, a member from the SEC has appeared in every single national championship game except 2014 when Ohio State beat Alabama in the semifinal. Regardless of if there actually was SEC bias with ESPN or not during the BCS era, BCS era is over, the playoff era is officially in, and with that, more teams have a chance to compete. Therefore, there will never be another conference to win seven straight undisputed national champions as the SEC did from 2006 to 2012. Number nine, 11 passing touchdowns in one game. The Houston Cougars have certainly had their fair share of record-breaking offenses and quarterbacks during their time in the college football ranks. A year after quarterback Andre Ware won the Heisman Trophy in 1989, stepped in junior quarterback David Klinger to fill his shoes. All Klingler did in 1990 was pass for 5,140 yards and 54 touchdowns in the run-and-shoot famed Houston offense. His best game, however, came on November 17th, 1990. A week after suffering their only loss of the season at number 14 Texas, the 12th ranked Cougars came home to play 1AA opponent Eastern Washington. Klingler threw for 11 touchdowns in the game against the Eagles in which wide receiver Trey Good said that they had actually had practices against themselves that were tougher. Klingler went to the bench halfway through the fourth quarter and finished with a stat line of 41 for 58 for 452 yards and, yes, 11 touchdowns. Klingler's 11 touchdowns broke San Diego State quarterback Dennis Shaw's 1969 record of nine passing touchdowns in one game. Some considered it bad sportsmanship by Houston and their head coach John Jenkins, who famously beat SMU 95-21 to the year before, but a record is a record nonetheless, no matter how it was attained, and I can almost guarantee you 11 passing touchdowns will never happen again. Number 8, Florida State's Bowl Streak. At the end of the 2016 regular season, Florida State accepted their 35th straight bowl bid 
tying Nebraska's all-time bowl streak. Considering how Florida State has played under Jimbo Fisher over the last few years, including the 2013 National Championship game, I don't see this streak ending anytime soon, barring some catastrophic reason or an academic scandal or some kind of self-imposed bowl ban. Especially with how lax most bowl games are. If you just have to be 6-6, six and six, a bowl would love to take Florida State at 6-6. Six and six. It is important to note here that the NCAA doesn't actually officially recognize this streak as still continuing. Florida State had to vacate the 2006 Emerald Bowl game against UCLA, who still has it as a loss in their record books because of actually an aforementioned academic scandal. Therefore, the NCAA does not see that that bowl game happened, which is weird because I saw it with my own eyes, and therefore the streak for Florida State has officially restarted and was killed off at 24. 24 is currently where Virginia Tech is, who is what the NCAA con considers rather the active bowl streak of 24, but I mean, I watched that Emerald Bowl game, so I know it happened, and Florida State was invited to the bowl, so it should, it should still be going. Florida State w should be gunning for their 36th bowl game in a row during the 2017 season. I got you, Florida State. I know what happened. You went to that bowl game. They can't take that away from you. In my heart, Florida State is going for their 36th straight bowl game. Number seven, most consecutive wins over one opponent. In 1963, junior quarterback Roger Staubach and the number four Navy midshipman beat Notre Dame 35-14. to It was the midshipman's fifth win over the Fighting Irish in the last eight years and would also be their last over the Irish for 43 seasons. For over the next four decades, year in and year out, Notre Dame played Navy, and year in and year out, Notre Dame beat Navy. And in fact, most of those games weren't even close. Navy finished within a touchdown of the Fighting Irish only six times during that 43-year span. The biggest heartbreak during those 43 years had to be the 1984 game. Notre Dame kicked a field goal late in the fourth quarter, to beat Navy 18-17 after Navy head coach Gary Tranquil claims that he, without a doubt, saw the play clock on that field goal roll down to zero and the refs not call it. Therefore, they got the field goal through and didn't have to go back five more yards. The 2007 Navy team that finally broke the streak beat a 1-7 Notre Dame team in their third year under infamous head coach Charlie Weiss. They finally won in the third overtime when Navy converted a two-point conversion and Notre Dame did not. Number six, total yards of offense in one game. Remember that 1989 SMU-Houston game I was talking about a little bit earlier? Well, this is that. This was the Mustangs' first season back after the so-called NCAA death penalty, and the team was comprised mostly of freshmen and walk-ons, which was no match for Andre Ware and the run-and-shoot offense. Ware threw for 517 yards and six touchdowns in the first half, both NCAA records, by the way, and the Mustangs trailed 59-14 to at halftime. Klingler came in in the second half and threw four extra touchdowns. Houston came in 58.5-point favorites and still beat the spread. The Houston Cougar mascot did 682 push-ups that afternoon. Combined, the Cougars had 771 yards passing and 250 rushing. Never again will two teams, particularly at the FBS level, be in the same situation again where one team is so much more superior than the other due to outside circumstances, so much more experienced, so much more talented than one team to be able to throw up this many yards in one game. 1,021 yards. Usually, it's very rare for two teams to combine for over 1,000 yards between them, a feat that's only been done a handful of times since this game. Number five, interceptions thrown in one game by one quarterback. This is a friendly reminder that not all records are positive. Coming into their 1969 meeting against Auburn, the seventh-ranked Gators were coming off routes of North Carolina and Vanderbilt and had cruised to a 6-0 undefeated record. Most of this was due to the arm of quarterback John Reeves, and the Tigers were coming off a devastating, heartbreaking one-point loss the week prior to rival LSU. Reeves threw the ball 66 times that weekend with a record nine passes falling into the open arms of Auburn Tigers defenders. That's one in every seven pass attempts. 
Auburn linebacker Sonny Ferguson had three interceptions and three different Tigers defenders had two apiece. The, uh, the Gators lost the game, though it may surprise you they only lost 38-12 to considering they had nine interceptions. It's still amazing to me that Florida head coach Ray Graves kept Reeves in the game the whole time, but I guess he figured they got there in the arm of Reeves, they will get out on the arm of Reeves. Reeves would finish up his collegiate career after the 1971 season, in which during his career he threw for a total of 7,549 passing yards, at the time the most in college football history. My favorite NFL team, the Philadelphia Eagles, selected Reeves in the first round of the 1972 NFL Draft, because, of course we did, he didn't amount to much in the NFL. Also, bonus fun fact, until last year, Reeves was current FAU head coach Lane Kiffin's father-in-law. Number four, the single season sack record. In 1988, Alabama linebacker Derek Thomas had arguably the greatest defensive single year in college football history. Thomas had 27 sacks in 1988, the most sacks in a single college football season before or since. Sorry, the camera stopped recording for some reason. The problem is, until the year 2000, the NCAA did not keep sacks as an official college football stat for some reason. So technically, Terrell Suggs from Arizona State holds the record at 24. But many schools and conferences, obviously including Alabama and the SEC, started keeping sacks as far back as 1980, Therefore, the 27 sacks is real. It's not something that they retroactively decided. It was a real stat kept at the time. Thomas is very arguably the best pass rushing linebacker of all time. He went on to have a college football as well as an NFL Hall of Fame career. His 52 career collegiate sacks are also, should be, the NCAA record as well if the NCAA would actually recognize it. Number three, the single season rushing yards record. While Derek Thomas was putting on a pass rushing clinic in Alabama in 1988, a shifty 5 foot 8 inch running back from Wichita, Kansas was making history of his own. After future NFL Hall of Fame running back Thurman Thomas graduated and left Oklahoma State after the 1987 season, there was genuine worry in Stillwater about how exactly they were going to replace him and his nearly 5,000 rushing yards. I mean, after all, in 1986 and 1987 combined, he had over 2,300 rushing yards. In step Barry Sanders. Sanders absolutely ripped opposing defenses apart. In 11 games, he ran for 2,628 yards, 37 touchdowns, and over 3,200 total yards. That also doesn't take into account the 222 rushing yards and five touchdowns he had in the Holiday Bowl against Wyoming, which isn't included in this 2,600-yard mark. He had five consecutive 200-yard games. He had 11 straight games where he scored at least two touchdowns, and he helped the Cowboys offense score at least 40 points in every single game except for a three-point loss against number eight, Oklahoma. It's kind of impossible to wrap your head around. It should probably go without saying that Barry Sanders won the Heisman Trophy in 1988. Also, his quarterback at the time is current Oklahoma State head coach Mike Gundy, the man with the mullet, and his offensive coordinator is none other than the 2001 Miami head coach national champion Larry Coker. Number two, no sacks allowed all season. The 1995 Nebraska Cornhuskers are generally considered one of the greatest teams of all time. Going 12-0, they absolutely dismantled opponents. But the closest one to them, they only beat Washington State by 14 points, and they averaged 38.6 points better than their opponents in 1995. They won the final Big 8 Conference Championship, they scored at least 35 points in every single game, and at the end of the season in the Fiesta Bowl, they absolutely picked apart number 2 Florida and beat them 62-24. 33 players from this team would go on to play football professionally, and absolutely none of them allowed an opposing defense to sack quarterback Tommy Frazier all season. Yes, the 95 Cornhuskers were running head coach Tom Osborne's triple option offense to absolute perfection, obviously limiting the amount of times that Frazier would drop back in the pocket for a pass, but they did average 19 passes per game, and they had 228 pass attempts during the season in general. Not to mention that that year the Huskers faced some of the toughest competition that 1995 college football had to offer, and still no sacks. It's really an unbelievable stat. 
And number one, the nation's longest winning streak. I didn't really mean to end with three straight Big 8 stats, but here we are. On October 3rd, 1953, Oklahoma traveled on the road to Pittsburgh and tied the Panthers 7-7. The next week, they beat number 15 Texas and did not lose again until 1957. Bud Wilkinson's Sooner squad finished 1953 season on a nine-game winning streak, including beating number one and national champion Maryland because they gave out the national championships before the season was over back then. In 1954, the Sooners finished the season undefeated in 10-0, but there were two other undefeated teams as well in UCLA and Ohio State. Now, the AP and the UPI split their vote between the Bruins and the Buckeyes, and the Sooners got no national championship recognition. Not the same in 1955, when the Sooners went 11-0, won the national championship, and once again beat Maryland in the Orange Bowl. In 1956, a 10-0 Oklahoma Sooners squad also won the national championship. The Sooners tacked on seven more wins before finally falling to Notre Dame in 1957. The Sooners packed on another seven straight wins before finally falling in November of 1957 to Notre Dame at home 7 to nothing. That week, Sports Illustrated had had on their cover Oklahoma running back Clendon Thomas with the headline, Why Oklahoma is Unbeatable. You know when a kicker has made like 45 straight extra points and an announcer points out that, wow, he hasn't missed an extra point? in like two years, and then he immediately misses an extra point. Yeah, that, that was going on a long time before we thought it was happening. The outcome is even more surprising when you remember that Notre Dame was coming off two consecutive losses before that game and went 2-8 and eight in 1956. After a late fourth quarter touchdown, Notre Dame ended the game with an interception in their own end zone. It was the only game that Oklahoma running back Clendon Thomas ever lost as an Oklahoma Sooner. Auburn and Ohio State split the 1957 National Championship. Never again will a record like that ever happen. No, no point in time would a team in this day and age with the playoff and conference championships and trying to get tougher out-of-conference scheduling and the parity of college football, no time in the future will a team ever win 47 straight games. In fact, since this happened at the FBS level, only two teams have ever won at least 30 games. That's why I put this at number one on my list. It's too hard to do in this day and age, and I do think that the Oklahoma Sooners 47-game consecutive winning streak is one that will stick around forever. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Of course, let me know what streaks you would like me to talk about. I might do a part two. While I was researching this, I did find a bunch of other stats that I found interesting. Let me know if that's something you would be interested in in the future as well. And any stats from your team that I left out that are absolutely unbelievable, please let me know that down below. Also, I started a brand new series on Thursday where I just kind of do a college football news video, talk about three to five college football topics. It went pretty well last week, so make sure to tune in Thursday for that. It will also be my 100th video on this channel which is pretty weird to think about. So definitely make sure to check that out on Thursday. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you did enjoy the video, please give it a big thumbs up to let me know you liked it. You can also click the circle right there to subscribe or any of the videos over there on the right-hand side of the screen that YouTube has picked for you to continue watching. Thank you so much, as always. Until next time. Hey lifers, Dustin here. It's Tuesday, which means it's time for another installment of College Football Top 10s. And in today's episode, I want to take a look at 10 college football records that I don't think will ever be broken. There are plenty of stats and streaks that seem like they will absolutely never be broken. And then you have a coach or a player or a team or a dynasty that comes along and shatters those records and propels that stat even further along than you thought it could ever go. And that's certainly the case in this video. There's a chance that by the end of the 2017 season, some of these records will drop. But in my Alabama having already lost to LSU 9-6 in overtime at home, when Oklahoma State, in a lot of people's eyes, should have had a shot at the Tigers to end the season. While the SEC is not nearly as dominant as it once was, the cream of the crop still is. In fact, since 2006, a member from the SEC has appeared in every single national championship game except 2014 when Ohio State beat Alabama in the semifinal. 
Regardless of if there actually was SEC bias with ESPN or not during the BCS era, BCS era is over, the playoff era is officially in, and with that, more teams have a chance to compete. The Gators defeating the Ohio State University 41-14 to in the BCS National Championship game, and for the next seven years, the elite teams of the SEC just seem to dominate every other team from every other conference. During the next seven years, the defenses from the Southeastern Conference just seemed faster and bigger and stronger and nastier than the defenses from other parts of the country. The rivalries, the head coaches, the memorable moments during the SEC during this period, everything just seemed more magnified somehow. This showed in the conferences that the SEC beat in those national championships. My humble opinion, I don't think they will, and I try to explain why in each one. If there's any records that I miss as you're going through this that you notice, please let me know down in the comments section, and let me know which one of these you think is the most unbelievable. And here we go, starting with number 10. Number 10, the SEC's seven straight national championships. For almost a decade, the SEC seemed untouchable. Coming off the tail end of USC's dominant beginning of the 21st century with their dynasty, the SEC used a couple of different teams to rotate the highest crown in the college football land. The streak started in 2006 with the Florida Championship Games, including members from the Big Ten, the Big 12, the Pac-10, and independent Notre Dame. In fact, in the 2013 season, Auburn was just 13 seconds shy of adding Florida State and the ACC to that list as well. Hell, the SEC even beat the SEC during this time period. That is the biggest spot of controversy during this seven-year stretch for the SEC is the idea that there was an SEC bias on ESPN's behalf to try to sway voters and any kind of polling indicators to get an Alabama-LSU rematch in the national championship game. 